So welcome to Optometry, guys. Um, we'll take you through a few things. Um, you've only got about 10, 15 minutes with me, and then there's a few up. Um, as you're probably aware, there's pizza at the end of this. And if you're anything like the um, academic staff, that's the only reason why we're here. <laughs> at least you guys laugh. So you're embarking on a degree in optometry. It's a five-year double degree. Um, presently, it's a Bachelor of Med Science, a Master's of Optometry. The course rule states that you have to finish it in eight years. Um, after the first three years um, of the Bachelor, to progress into the Master's, you need to have a GPA of five. So that's a grade point average of five, so you actually have to average a credit in your topics. It's not that difficult. Um, the GPA average is calculated only on the second and third year, and the reason why we do it that way is because people can actually transfer in after the first year um, from a Bachelor of Medical Science, so that's to keep it fair and equitable to everybody proceeding into the Masters. Um, the teaching that's that we do within the course is there's a really strong theme around self-directed learning. So that's you as students going out and finding information about certain aspects. There is a framework around that, but it also puts you in a situation where you can investigate things that resonate with you, which are important to you. Um, Hey, Jerry. Um, they're signing in. So when we all get COVID, we know where it came from. Um, the mechanisms by which the self-directed learning is delivered earlier um, in the bachelor program is through team-based learning um, and through case-based a case-based learning topic. Um, Team-based learning is when you're working in groups to actually investigate conditions and situations. Um, Case-based learning is a, it's a much more of an individual investigation. Um, in the last 18 months of the, the master's program, it's pretty much all clinical placements. So you're either here at the university or out in the community seeing patients under the supervision of an experienced optometrist. There is a, a theme that runs also through the Masters of Research. You have a research project that you need to um, pursue. Oh, by the way, ask questions if you, you have them. So this is the team as it stands at the moment. There's a few of us, not all of us are here. Some of us are actually in the clinic at the moment because we've got 50 year students um, seeing patients at the mo very moment. But to um, quickly run through the team, we've got Nicola, who's the professor. Wave, Nicola. Um, Paul Constable, who's a senior lecturer. Um, he's recently come back from Victoria, so he's in isolation at the moment. Um, Ranjay, who's the course coordinator. Um, Malika, who's the student engagement. They've recently changed names engagement coordinator. Um, me, uh, so I'm academic lead. Uh, Jeremiah, who's a senior lecturer. Neil Murray, who was unable to attend today, um, who's a, also a senior lecturer. Christina, who's actually down in the clinic at the moment. Jackie, who's on maternity leave and is a lecturer. Um, Anna, who's in the clinic or, yeah. Uh, a lecturer. Um, Anna's with us four days a week. Um, Kristen, who has a special interest in contact lenses, um, is an associate lecturer and she's here three days a week. And the rest uh, are fairly sessional people. Um, Hayley McDonald, who's primarily a practicing optometrist in Adelaide, who comes in and helps us. Gemma, who's waving over there. Um, 
Gemma is the, the all knowledgeable person who um, knows about case-based learning and all the, the cases that you get to do. Um, Paige, we're sh um, soon to lose her to maternity leave. Um, Cassie's going to be doing a, a PhD shortly. Andrea is one of our case-based learning tutors, as is Paula, Ken and, and Kathy. So there's quite a few of us. After doing all that, you're not going to actually have a lot to do with us for the first, for this year, and you'll see more of us from there on in. The first year of the course is predominantly fundamental sciences. So, get your head around email communications and the learning platform Flow. Um, that's the repository of all the information that you're going to need on a, a daily, weekly and semester basis. Keep checking your, your Flinders email address. It mightn't be your predominant email address, but that's where the important communications from the, from the teaching staff, the teaching section, the college and the university is going to come. We have mentors. Wave mentors. Uh, see the enthusiasm? <laughs> They're really engaged. No. Um, so we've had a mentor process um, running for an, quite a number of years and the, all these guys have volunteered to be part of the process and, and help you guys transition into university life. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they're here for the pizza. We will organise um, liaison meetings with staff um, early in the, uh, the semester. So, the challenges for you guys is optometry doesn't have any prerequisites. No course at the university has prerequisites. But we do actually, there is an assumption that you have stage two chemistry, physics and mathematics. The onus is on you to get yourself up to speed in these topics because you will be meeting these topics in first year. And if you haven't done these topics in year 11 and 12, you might have some ground to make up. Students, as a general rule, do tend to struggle with the transition from high school to university. Um, and that's because nobody cares if you put that assignment in. Nobody go is going to check on how you're going with assessments. The onus is really on you as adults to actually get things done and get them done in time. It's university policy that all lectures are recorded. The mechanism of this is to make it accessible if you're unwell. A lot of, especially first year students, fall into the trap of, it's recorded, I'll watch it later. And you get into the week before the exams and you have more lectures to watch than there is hours left before the exam. So tr if you are going to re uh, rely on the recorded lectures, try, try to stay up to date with those recorded le uh, lectures. I know Adelaide's a difficult city to get across with public transport, so if you're on the other side of town, watching a lecture low, live or recorded may well be something that's worthwhile doing. There's been changes with the assessment policy here at Flinders. Um, and I won't go into the details, but be aware the assessment policy is there so you understand the process um, and it outlines how we can actually assess you. One of the more pointy things to talk about is traditionally optometry has been a course that people who really want to do medicine are doing and I'm not going to ask you, the people within the room to identify themselves in that category. Optometry is actually a fairly difficult course to get a high GPA in. It's easy to get a GPA of five. It's difficult to get a really high GPA. If you've embarked on optometry as your second choice and you are actually hoping to do medicine, 
and transfer across to medicine after the Bachelor of Sci um, Medical Science, Vision Science, you're doing yourself a disservice. The way that transfer works, it's around an interview and around your GPA. No course is going to help you with the interview, but you can help yourself and help your GPA by studying a degree that it's easier to maintain a high GPA. If you want advice about that, um, talk to admissions or talk to some of the staff. If you're having trouble, speak up and speak up early. We do understand that this is um, a challenging time. It's, you know, even without COVID, um, the transition to university is interesting for all of us. If you're not sure of what to do, if you're not sure of how you're tracking, ask questions. We're always happy to answer questions. Um, and the people to go to are student services, but also the topic coordinators. So each topic will have a defined person on the flow page who looks after that topic. And they're your first point of call if you're having trouble with the content in that topic. The next layout level up is the course coordinator. Course coordinator roles in this degree get a little bit confused. Um, and we'll um, take you through that in just a minute. And of course, student services, health and counselling. So, to keep everybody confused, the Bachelor of Medical Science, Vision Science, actually sits in the College of Medicine and Public Health, whilst the Masters actually sits within the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. So, the course coordinator for the Bachelor of Med Medical Science, Vision Science, presently is a lady by the name of Vula. Um, and I've worked with her for a number of years. She's a lovely lady. Her office is actually not on this campus um, because she teaches into the Bachelor of Medical Science. So, if you have questions about progression in the bachelors or you've spoken to a, a uh, topic coordinator and you want more information, VUL is your first point of call when you're in the bachelor's degree. When you hit the masters, Ranjay's the individual that you talk to. In saying that, if you're more comfortable talking to myself or Ranjay as a first point of call, please do that. But don't get concerned if we go, I actually can't give you a straight answer for that. We need to talk to Vula, okay? Um, and as we said earlier, the student engagement coordinator um, is Malika. Um, so everybody that's here, um, their offices are actually in the optometry offices that are in the West Wing. Um, does everybody, has anybody been to the office? Do we show them where that is? Keep, keep that secret? Yeah, okay, good. <clears throat> so, most people who embark on optometry as a degree um, are thinking about being an optometrist in a community setting seeing patients, prescribing glasses, detecting disease, fitting contact lenses, etc., etc. The degree itself actually does set you up for a lot of other things. Um, it's a, there's a, a num, uh, there's a high percentage of practicing optometrists, especially in other states that run their own businesses. South Australia's had a history of corporate optometry, um, which is changing. Um, some of the most entertaining and challenging optometry you'll do is in a regional setting. Um, there are research pathways to investigate um, and also 
there's a number of optometrists that end up being company reps within the ophthalmic industry as a whole. So think a bit broader than just being an optometrist in a shopping centre in a metropolitan setting. There's more fun to be had than that. I probably should have added, added academia there, shouldn't I? Or are we trying to, yeah, okay. Sorry. So, a thumbnail sketch of what you guys are going to be studying. We're in the pr process of course review. So, by the time you guys get to third year, some of this mightn't be correct. So, as I said before, first year is very much fundamental sciences. Second year, we move into biochemistry and molecular genetics, immunology, neuroscience, and you start meeting some opt um, optometry topics like optics, um, skills for optometric practice, and communication is very much pitched towards optom optometry practice. Year three, you've got pathophysiology, anatomy, pharmacology, normal eye. You start actually learning some of the techniques of optometry and clinical skills, and you'll um, start doing team-based learning, which is that self-directed mode of investigation and learning that I was talking about earlier. First, front end of fourth year, you're still pretty much on on campus doing more clinical skills, learning about ocular disease and ophthalmology. Um, and the second half is when you, we start doing placement topics. Second half of fourth year placement is predominantly here at the university, at the university clinic. Um, and it's fairly structured and you're protected to a certain um, level. Whilst in fifth year, you're pretty much predominantly out in the community seeing patients. You have blocks of lectures here back on campus where we cover um, the business aspects, research, low vision, occupational optometry and therapeutics. But predominantly, you're seeing patients and honing your skills in and bringing to bear all the things that you've learnt earlier in the course to the patient experience. Have you got any questions? You okay? Yep. Cool. All right. Well, my name's Narelle Murdoch. Ooh, I'm just killing the microphone. I might just leave that there. Um, I'm the manager of the Counselling and Disability Service um, on the main campus in Bedford Park. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you about the number of services that sit within Health Counselling Disability Services. Um, there's actually 12, 12 individual services, and I manage three of them. So this is the medical service, counselling service, online services out of hours, we have a pathology service, disability service, we do workshops, we have OASIS, intake services, equal opportunity, self-help and staff support. So I'm just going to go through some of the key services that sit within that. Um, we have a bulk billing medical clinic, which has been really useful for students um, up on the Bedford Park campus. So you're able to access um, a bulk billing GP service as you would in the community. Um, so they offer um, um, a fully uh, fledged GP service with vaccinations, with health checks, uh, sexually transmitted infection testing or other um, health concern testing. Um, they offer prescriptions and referrals. So pretty much your stock standard GP service. It is bulk billed, so you need your Medicare card or with um, the overseas student healthcare card. Um, and for bookings, you need to find that number there. Within the GP service, we've got um, female and male GPs, and we also have practice nurses who are there to support the doctors. Um, three days a week, we have SA Pathology, so they work with the medical team um, and are able to take blood um, from a student. So if you need that services at all, coming between nine and 12, Monday to Wednesday, um, can be useful for students to, to have their blood work taken on campus. Um, part of the counselling team and the disability team is what we call our intake and assessment team. 
and this is um, with counsellors and a, a mental health nurse as well as a disability advisor. So the key to this particular team is during business hours, they're the first port of call for students. So this can be a student who's in distress or a student who um, is wanting some information about the services or where they might go um, in terms of supports for them. Um, they're also there to respond to student crisis if need be. Um, there are some links there for you to follow. Will you send out the presentation to students? Great, okay. Um, so the counselling team, I guess, is the next port of call for students after having contact with the intake team. Um, and this is a mixture of psychologists and social workers. We have six counsellors of mixed gender. Um, so students can present with any personal issue that impacts on their study. So that can be an academic matter, so procrastination, time management, perfectionism, um, you know, their course choice, how they're responding to their supervisors or their topic coordinators, for example, or it can be a personal issue. So this is um, anything at all, really. Personal relationships, mental health is a really big one in all universities, probably across the world, but certainly in Australia. Um, you know, mental health, I'm referring to anxiety, depression and other um, significant mental health issues that impact on a student. And it could also be, you know, how am I going in life, where am I going in life, um, low self-esteem or a personal crisis, so really anything at all actually. Um, we have a short-term therapy model, so what that means is students are able to access a counsellor up to six sessions um, a year. Um, and if there is, so it's very much about problem solving, solution focused work with the student. And if there are more pressing issues that need longer term support than that, then our counsellors will link you into community services um, for that. So we have um, nine to five appointments, Monday to Friday, and uh, telephone and Skype appointments are available for students if they would like that. Um, and that's been really important for us, particularly last year when we were off site for such a long time. Um, just a quick note about confidentiality. So we, get, we do get some referrals from academics um, and that um, is really important. So if a student is talking to an academic and they are distressed, the academic can check in with the student to see whether it's okay to come to us. Um, a, a point about that is that we won't then go back to the school. So once you, you, you hit the service, um, you know, it, it's absolutely confidential um, and there is no reporting requirements that we have to any of the colleges. Okay, we also have started this year a Yungarendi student counselling uh, position and this is funded by um, Yungarendi. Um, and this is uh, two of our counsellors who work with uh, Yungarendi students, so Indigenous students here at Flinders. Um, they are um, available um, at any time to be able to talk to students as a specialist service um, and will work with um, academics um, around student wellbeing issues as well. That's their contact there. Um, and Vanessa and Matt are the counsellors involved and they sit up in the student centre. Um, out of hours crisis line, sort of take over when we stop. So we're a nine to five service and out of hours operate after nine, after five and before nine and on the weekends, public holidays and university closure. Um, and this is a really useful line if you or a friend are experiencing um, distress um, mental health issues and that the usual services aren't open. Really useful too around you know, suicide risk or self-harm risk. Um, and they offer a phone line, so they are external to the service at Flinders, but they are um, answering the phone line as Flinders counselling service. Um, you can text them and students really like that. Um, they can get a response back that way. And often what will happen, depending on the student need, is that uh, we will then follow up with the student the following day. So crisis doesn't happen between nine and five, so if things happen after that, please reach out. Um, we have an equal opportunity um, counsellor as well as a sexual violence counsellor. Um, and these are counsellors who are trained to support and assist students, um, first of all, in the resolution of an equal opportunity uh, breach, so equal opportunity legislation. Um, or also students who um, have had an experience of sexual assault or sexual harassment or victimisation from other students or even from staff. Um, these counsellors can talk um, about support options, um, provide information and referral, um, and there's their email address there. 
Um, another one of the services that I manage is the disability services team. So this um, is three disability advisors who are working with students who are coming to uni with a disability that impacts on how they engage with their course. And what they really do is negotiate with um, academics around creating what's called an access plan, so it's a disability access plan. Um, and this is a, an alternative um, plan to assist students to meet the inherent requirements of the course with reasonable adjustments. Um, so, and they also provide ongoing support and advocacy um, and information for students throughout their, their study in relation to disability related matters. And this can include things that are temporary or permanent, um, it can be physical disability, mental health disability, or it could also be specific learning difficulties as well. Um, OASIS um, is really the student community centre, um, and it's located again on the Bedford Park campus. And this um, community centre really has sort of three underpinnings um, around community and diversity, space, faith and spirituality, and mental and physical wellbeing. Um, this service has reopened on the 15th of February as was quite significantly affected by um, COVID and COVID restrictions. Um, they run language groups, um, they provide community meals, they run a market, they have other welfare programs, um, mediation, um, meditation, yoga and more. And they also run some of the bigger community um, events throughout the year like Are You OK Day, University, Mental Health Day, Harmony Day. Um, and this is where our student wellbeing ambassadors sit. So it's a really nice place to visit if you have an opportunity. Um, we also run health and wellbeing workshops. This is face to face and online um, on a range of wellbeing issues, studyologies about uh, procrastination and managing that. We run mindfulness yoga, um, mental fitness online program. We also recently have started Be Well Plan with um, Samri and Mindfulness for Academic Success. And this year we've been doing um, mental health first aid for students as well. Um, there is a blog and newsletter um, that sits on the OASIS site and there's always a whole lot of information, including e-mental health services that sit on that site. Um, we've got a number of um, a presence in e-health through Dr. Gareth Ferber. Um, and he, he writes a blog, he writes a newsletter, he, he generates a whole lot of information. Uh, for students to be reading and again that was really important during COVID last year when students didn't have a, um, anywhere to go really so keeping in touch that way was very good. Um, we also have a self-help library that Gareth manages so that's on topics um, around wellbeing and resilience and procrastination and study skills. Um, the digital copies I would recommend clicking on that but there are hard copies of that in the health service. Um, and I guess our last part, which we probably do less out of all of that, is staff support. And so this is more probably ad hoc. At this time of the year, we go out and talk to students like this and support staff around student transition. Um, but we also provide staff with support around responding to students in distress um, and um, provide lectures and workshops on self-care, um, mental fitness, preparing for placement on request. Um, so there's a fair bit of stuff that we do. Um, as I said, there's a newsletter. You can click on that and that'll take you to register for the newsletter. And that's us in a snapshot. Hi, everyone. Um, look, my name's Kirsty and I'm the co-president of the Flinders University Rural Students Club. Um, we have a short video to show you today um, and then I can answer any questions you have. It's a really good club. Um, I strongly recommend getting involved. We do a lot of different things with all allied health, nursing and medicine. So, yeah. I don't know if the audio is working. Oh, no. Just <laughs> I do think we've got audio. Yeah, the audio is off. 
I will say you shouldn't be doing it. I think if a we might actually let us select that. We might have to send you the link of the video. We were feeling so organised this year. Um, but basically, um, what it talks about is all the different events that we run, um, some of the people that have been involved in the club before. Um, we have a stampless stall uh, on Thursday, um, and so come and join up. We've got some good freebies this year. Um, yeah, and check us out on Facebook. We'll send you the link, guys. <laughs> Rather than fit around with you, yeah. It's not a problem. Have you got any questions? So, mainly targeted at regional students? No, it's actually targeted to anyone who's interested in being involved. Um, I don't know about your course, but a lot of the courses that we have across the university involve at least one rural placement. Um, so it's getting students out there um, to experience what that might be like. It's getting students to see uh, other disciplines because we found that a lot of people are sort of discipline seric and they uh, stick with the same people from each discipline that they, they know. Um, but it's getting to meet people from different areas, especially if you're going to go and work in a rural environment where you interact with nursing students, you'll interact with doctors. Um, so it's really about meeting new people um, learning about the rural environment. At this stage, we've got a camp coming up to the Riverland, um, probably in August, um, and so a few fun things that we've got planned. So definitely come and meet us. You, you will be strongly encouraged to do a, a regional placement in fifth year. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, optometry is quite different in a regional setting compared to a metropolitan setting. So there's a lot of learnings to be had, as well as having a good time. Um, one of the other things that we've been working on is um, a lot of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander engagement. Um, so learning about cultural awareness and what's culturally appropriate as well, which I think is quite important across all health disciplines, including optometry. Um, so look out for some of those sessions as well this year. So, thanks. Got any questions? No questions? <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Can we use it? No. You, you, you can use it. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a wrap. Of course, you need you need the. Okay, turn it on first. Do something. Make a joke. I don't know, Rocky. Do something. All right, hello everyone. I must say it's a little bit quiet in this room. So, before I start this presentation, I'm gonna do one of those things that everyone hates. It's one of those raise your hand exercises. I'm seeing a lot of faces that are like, oh. Okay, but just work with me, please. So, raise your hand if you've just finished year 12. So you know your ATAR off the top of your head. It's like all you've been talking about all summer, yep. And some of you guys might not even be 18 yet. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah. Raise your hand for me if you're not local to South Australia. So, oh. <laughs> so you might be from a different state. This might be your first time coming to Adelaide. I know we've got some Perth transfer students joining us today. Yep. And pop your hand up if maybe you've done another degree first or you've taken a gap year before joining us in Flinders Optometry. Awesome. Well, my point is that even though you've come from all different places, you're still sitting here today. You're still sitting in this same lecture theatre, you're still in first year of optometry, and honestly, you might be sitting here wondering, what am I doing here? Well, I can tell you that you have strapped yourselves in for a very exciting, a very rewarding, although a very long five-year degree. And if you have a fascination for eyes and you genuinely believe that changing someone's vision has the potential to change someone's life, 
then welcome to Flinders Optometry. You're in a course full of like-minded people and we are so, so excited to have you here joining us. My name is Claire and alongside my old mate Wonky, we are final year students and also the co-presidents of Fuosa. So this short presentation is just to chat to you guys about who we are and what we can do for you during your five years here at Flinders. So who are Fuosa? We are a team of students from years one to five and we are dedicated to making your student life memorable for all the right reasons. So we create opportunities, we coordinate events for you guys to get to know each other better and to get connected to the outside world. Because believe it or not, in five years, you guys are going to be proper optometrists, like proper, proper optometrists, which is hard to believe right now, but that's why you're here, right? So we are responsible for doing all that fun stuff. But we're also responsible for representing Flinders Optometry when we talk to other optometry schools around the country. We're also the middleman if big names like Specsavers, OPSM, Optometry Australia, if they want to get through to you guys, they have to come through us first. So that's just some of the stuff that for us to do. I'm just going to hand over to Wonky to talk about some more interesting things. Yep. So throughout the year, we organised multiple events and... Lots of it was cancelled last year due to COVID, so we're really excited to get our social calendar up and running this year. So some of the events include Welcome Night. So this is a cocktail event where we kind of target it. Oh, sorry, this is kind of stuck. So this is where we invite you guys, or we invite everyone else as well, to help you guys make friends. Personally, the people that I met in my first year Welcome Night are the people that I'm still closest to, so I really recommend you guys all going to this. It's a lot of fun. And the next event is um, Pub Crawl, where you wear like a themed t-shirt and you go around different pubs and you just basically mingle with your friends and just have fun. And the final one is the Optometry Eyeball. So this is a theme, a new theme ball where we invite staff, students, alumni and some invited guests. It comes with a three course meal, as well as photographers, photo booth, awards, raffle prizes. So yeah. And last year we themed 1920s, and it was a huge success despite COVID, having to host about 200 to 250 people. So, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, cool. And merchandise. So we design, order, and distribute our merchandise, optometry, Flinders Optometry merchandise. So traditionally we do hoodies and rugby jumpers, but um, we added crew neck to the collection last year, and it was quite popular. So this year we're going to add um, tote bags and t-shirts as well. So the orders will open up around late March or early April, so stay tuned for it as well. So like I said before, we're the middleman when the big names want to come and talk to you guys, maybe nab you up for employment or just get their name out there. So we can partner with these organisations to bring you guys events. So for example, Specsavers could do a quiz night for you, OPSM could do a movie night. So we're responsible for getting you guys as future optometrists connected to the real optometry world. And you might have already seen this video with these two very attractive people in it, if you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. But we recently just started a new project. It's a web series called Optometry, How Do You See It? Actually, I'm back at it with the hand showing. Who's seen this video? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So this video is basically talking about what this project is. We made this project with you guys in mind because like Jason said earlier today, you guys don't really have a lot to do with optometry until later in your degree. So our aim is to essentially just inform you guys what you've signed up for. Optometry is so much more than just being cooped up in a little room and showing people lenses. You can really change someone's life by finishing this degree and helping other people that really need it most. And so we'll be talking through with an episode every month that talks about the different areas of optometry that you could branch into and hopefully that gives you something to look forward to as you progress through the degree. So Fuosa is quite active on social media. So on Facebook you can find us Fuosa, which is run by us obviously. And you can also find Flinders Optometry and Vision Sciences Group, which is run by the staffs, I believe. And you can also find us on Instagram for po po polls, posts, updates, as well as YouTube for those videos that Claire mentioned earlier. And so we're looking for two of you guys here to join our team. 
There are excellent benefits to joining FUOSA, so you'll get to meet new people from across all year levels, and it's a really good way for you to get handy tips and advice, and also to show you what you're in for for the rest of your degree. It's also excellent for developing your communication and leadership skills, which are not only important for personal development, but also as a clinician, because our profession is all about talking to other people. And it's also a really great way to be proactive in the student body. So if you've got new ideas for what Flinders Optometry could do, come join our team and bring those ideas to the table. So we're looking for someone who's organised, who's punctual, who manages their time well. We're looking for someone who can bring new ideas to the table and is also not afraid to try new things. And we also like people that like to eat because all of our meetings are at restaurants and dessert places and things like that. So if you want to eat dessert with a pretty funky bunch of people, come join Foyosa. So all of your application criteria and all the instructions about who to send it to when it's due by, all up on the slide there. And also in your tote bags, we've also put a little card in. So make sure that you keep your eyes peeled for that. And now I'd just like to invite all of our mentors down. So we've got some lovely third and fourth years that have volunteered their time and sage words of wisdom. So we've organised you into these mentor groups. From my understanding, you may have already seen this. It might have been sent through to your chat. So if you haven't seen this, that's fine. Just find your name here. Don't be shy. Come over. Yeah. So I'll just introduce you all to your mentors. So I've got, now I can't see. So we've got Yen, Stephen, Tin, Julie, Tina, Darren, Ty, Arushi, Lillian and Tiana here. So all their names are up there. So what I'd like you to do now is just stand up and, oh, Jack, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'll just get the mentors to spread out across the room, actually, and then you guys can all get up and find your mentors. Have a chat, introduce yourself, and then we'll head out for some lunch. So thank you for listening, and we hope to see lots of FUOSA applications soon.